So this season has been going off great with the new story, modes, weapons and activities to participate in. But one thing I would definitely say that has made the season even more great are the new mods which, you know, brings tons of new build varieties in game. One mod that has caught the eye of the community is the surprise attack mod which ultimately makes Sidon not only extremely powerful but very potent in all activities it's used in. And when I say OP, I really mean this mod is overpowered like anything before. You're going to want to have this mod if you love using sidearms in games. Hello everyone, Freedy Hero here and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build video for this week's content. I hope you are all keeping safe out there, as today, we will be focusing on a new surprise attack mod and the Devil's Ruined Sidearm to create an overpowered and massively fun, charged with light sidearm build. This build is very easy to create and doesn't need 50% of the things that I have in the build, although it would be helpful, and is great for other sidearms as well and not just the Devil's Ruins, although I'm doing this for maximum uptime and damage. Let me just say that if you're a new player who's looking to get to endgame quickly through any means necessary, but don't want to heavily invest into the modding system just yet, then stick around and I'll show you some things that you'll just need to make your life a lot more easier. So with subclass, we will be going with Way of the Pathfinder to make use of the lockdown perks and Heart of the Pack buff. I'll be honest with you here, a subclass aren't super important for the build, as any subclass can be used here, plus it's not going to have a dominant effect on the build overall unless you have the mods that you wish to further expand on with them. I chose this subclass as I wanted to make use of the hard pack buff, which will provide a large buff to our stats and weapon reloading speed, which, all in all, will affect how quickly you can use your weapon in a heated fight, and our tether's debuff effect as well, so that we can do more damage when the timing is right. Like I mentioned in my last video, this subclass is best used when in groups, so you can use hard to pack more often, and as lockdown and combat provision both work with each other so well, you can have a very high uptime using this whole subclass if you focus in the right areas. This subclass will be used in common activities such as nightfall, strikes, gambit and public events, to where it will succeed the most in, and this is also where we will see the build shine in the most. Now, Way of the Wraith is also viable as well for a Shattering Strike perk, which also debuffs enemies when you pull off a Flawless Execution perk. As you only need to crouch and land a precision kill to activate the two perks, it would make a lot more sense to use the subclass instead if you plan on maximizing your DPS quickly, and you're happy to get up close and personal against a Ultra, Boss or Major to pull off the perk. It also comes with the Corrosive Smoke perk as well, which slows enemies down for a few seconds, which is great for giving you ample time to build up your stack and then damage said enemy you face. Of course, out of the two, it would depend on what you value the most for subclass preferences, as like I said, subclasses aren't super important for the build unless you have something in mind that you wish to expand on. Here you have two choices with great examples as to how you can maximize your build further with them, with one being more on the mutual teamwork side of things, while the other is more focused on the solar and up frontal confrontation type of things. Now for the grenades, I have chosen the Void War Grenades for their length and ongoing damage they can pull against an aggressive wave of enemies coming at you. Thanks to the lockdown perk, we can increase our grenade duration and damage, which can help with weakening bosses for us. Vortex Grenades are also great for their damage and duration, and when paired with the Oppressive Darkness mod as well, it can make running certain content even more of a breeze to run with. For weaponry, you can have two choices here. For maximizing your sidearm uptime, you can have a primary and secondary sidearm combo with a heavy of your choice, or you can have one sidearm of your choice and a primary to be a mid to long range weaponry as backup, and your heavy machine gun with ideally a fast to average fire rate for small to large mobs. In my case here, I've chosen the second option to help me cover my bases with Randy Throw Knife being my main primary weapon of choice. Very fast and lethal at range, this pinnacle weapon was lethal in PvP when it was first introduced and still has its place depending on the map you're playing on. Its perks, rapid hit and kill clip combo together make Scout feel great for continuous barrage of hits on enemies that have large crit spots or even small ones, to where you'll see kill clip in action all the time, and gaining that damage buff and landing precision hits all the time is incredibly easy with a Scout Rifle, to the point of always reloading your weapon incredibly quickly and always having that damage buff available all the time. For secondary, I'm using the Devil's Ruin Exotic Sidearm which was part of Seasonal Dawn, and this is a sidearm that I've always wanted to have for the simple fact that it can shoot out a highly combustible beam of energy at your targets, 
and it looks and feels great to use. This weapon is a crossbreed between a sidearm, a fusion rifle and a trace rifle and the results are this, a beautiful and well crafted sidearm that you can bring for the majority of the endgame content that you want if you don't want to use a fusion rifle or a shotgun for example and it feels absolutely amazing and powerful to use. Now the Devil's Rune has two fire modes, its first mode is a standard single shot mode, its second mode now fires a highly powerful laser that uses up all the ammo in its magazine but dishes out a large amount of damage in one go which can vaporize minor and major enemies and generally all enemies if it completely kills them. It also has the effect of staggering unstoppable champions as well which is great for certain nightfall missions you take on. As the weapon's outfire is incredibly powerful with or without the buffs attached to it, I found that this is the best side on the pick when using this build as it can take on an easy delete ultra level enemies with ease if we have the surprise attack mod attached and active. It's also very easy to use on the user side of things and ammo is plentiful when using it since it's more primary. So you can outfire this weapon all the time if you wish but do be careful as you will still run out of ammo incredibly quickly. For a heavy I've chosen the 21% delirium heavy machine gun for its great ad clearing effect it has for some of the higher tier content and its all round versatility. I thought this weapon for the set would fit in quite well as I'll be going up against a lot of minor and major mobs to get my surprise attack mod up and going. So I thought that just in case things get bad on my end I can use this as a backup to stack up damage via the killing tally perk and then use it against a boss or ultra etc that's causing me a lot of trouble. Of course like I said this can be changed to your personal choice. For stats our recovery and resilience are both in the 50 ranges with my resilience unfortunately being on the brink of hitting 60. These are the two recommended levels to always hit for any build in general and although they are still quite low I can make use of the heart of the pack buff for a plus 33 to my main 3 stats effects which are recovery and resilience within these areas so we can easily improve on them further whenever we have our ability ready. Usually the recommended level for these two stats is 50 with recovery going higher as it can benefit you a lot more in higher endgame content. However in this case here I'm going to ignore that as I'm going to be making use of the heart of the pack buff that will provide a plus 33 to my main 3 stats when it's fully in effect and at max capacity. Now when it's fully affected it will affect my recovery and resilience both within this range and it will also increase a few other stats as well but mainly it will improve my recovery and resilience. Now for my discipline stat I've chosen to push it all the way up to the 60 ranges for a 51 second cooldown which I plan to coordinate with my lockdown and combat proficient perk so I can gain back melee energy quickly and thus trigger my heart of the pack buff. From example shown this allows me to focus on other areas as I wish without needing to fully invest in my strength stat and also meaning that I don't need to focus so much on improving my smoke bombs and why I can keep my strength stat at 20. If you personally wish to at least gain some energy back for your abilities then distribution, outreach and absolution are great to pair with this build as well. For armor pieces which will need to be this season or last season's armor you will need 3 void affinity pieces with 2 of them being for the new mods this season, 1 solar piece for the new solar mod supercharged and 1 arc affinity class armor for the new swift charge mod. No exotic is being used in this build so you can freely customize however you like here but if you do choose to use exotic be aware of what you will be sacrificing. So with all that being said and done we have the following mods being used. Head, Resilient, Sidearm Finder and Stacks on Stacks mods. Arm, Discipline, Enhanced Sidearm Loader and Charged Harvester mod. Chest, Resilience and Supercharged mod. Leg, Recovery, Sidearm Scavenger and Spider Attack mod. Cloak, Concussive Damner, Distribution and Swift Charge mod. Within the final collection of the build we have created a setup that focuses on making Sidearm your primary weapon of choice. The most interesting thing about this setup is that all of this could have been achieved before by swapping the surprise attack mod to the high energy fire mod instead but damage wise would be a lot more lower to where in our case here we are fully maximizing our damage to its highest potential with the set. So here is what we are working with. The surprise attack mod allows any side I'm used to do times 2 damage from its base attack. Now what this means is that if you have a side on that does 2000 damage per crit 
Once you have the charge magazine active, it will change your damage to 4000 instead, which is a lot when you look into the fact that it can be stacked with other damage perks. Yes, you've heard that right. Rampage, Mordy Kill Clip, Kill Clip, Bubble, Well, you name it. This mod can be stacked with practically any damage perks or buffs or debuffs, which make a simple sidearm into a power weapon of your own. Now, the charge magazine stacks depending on how much charge with light you have. So, if you have one charge with light available, then you get 5 charge rounds, and the max is 20, so 4 charge with lights. This is important as when the weapon's charge rounds are active, they would disappear upon shots connected onto the enemies. So, you would need to fully be aware of what you're hitting and then restack it all over again if you can. This is where stacks and stacks and supercharge come in for increasing my stack load and Charge Harvester plus Swift Charge come in for allowing me to get both my primary and secondary to become charged with light easily. Now as you can see within the video, you can see many instances of me using this against an Ultra for example, who requires either abilities, supers or power weapons to do the most amount of damage on them. And yet, with this surprise attack mod fully charged and me using its outfire on my Devil's Ruin, you can see the amount of damage I can do to either outright kill them or weaken them to the point of a easy finish. Take a look at how much damage I can do to the Captain Ogre in the Tribute Wars as an example. Devil's Ruin's laser damage is 2374 per crit. Now times the magazine size of 15 to your laser damage and you get a grand total of 35,610 in total. Now when the spider attack mod is active we get a total of 4747 per laser hit so times 2 multiplier. So times 15 to that new damage number, and you now get 71,205. In perspective, that is two thirds of the Ultra's health gone if we land just crits on them with our sidearm laser attack in one burst. Yes, one. Or against a boss now, that's at least one third or around that for against a boss. The Scions everyone are now meta, which is great as they aren't that favourable to many players, but now with this simple mod added, they have become a new rising icon for the season. So you can see generally how powerful and great the mod is when combining with the Devil's Ruin, but remember what I said earlier, it doesn't stop there. You can stack more buffs onto them to get even more damage out of them, so you can go beyond plus ultra for all of your sidearms. For example, Remember when I said I didn't want to add a exotic as they won't have that much use for the build? Well the Machineer's trick sleeves also provide a damage buff when low on health, and a fast reload speed as well, so there's wiggle room if you're happy with making some sacrifices on your end. Now the only downside to this build is its magazine size, and the ammo crisis you're going to have when using the exotic out fire way too much, as this can drain your ammo reserves very quickly if you don't keep yourself topped up or at least have mods to support this area. Of course, this can be easily avoided if you have the right mods attached, or better off pace when you want to use your lasers, but in some instances you will get into a habit that you will laser every enemy to death, and notice you have no ammo left to compensate the next counter. Don't worry, it happens to the best of us. Overall, a fantastic and interesting mod that I wouldn't have expected to see Bungie go ahead and do as they tend to play it safe or make things way too OP on their end. But in our case here, this has given us a wide opportunity to explore all sidearms more and use them in endgame fully just like using a shotgun or fusion rifle. This build here will provide all the needs and wants in terms of crafting the same or identical build loadout as shown, and honestly, this is the most greatest amount of fun I've had since this season has started. But of course, there is another build I'm going to be doing, which you guys will always be updated on. So if you enjoyed the video, then by all means do leave a like and a sub. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, a link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.